Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down in the comments section below with the hashtag AskGCNTech. We've got a banger this week with some great questions. <sighs> yeah. Who's so up I first? Who's right, up first, first question is from Eric Bellrose. They say, hi, Ali, Alex, Ollie and Manon. The bike will got my tubeless tyres installed on new bought carbon wheels. The bike shops say that I shouldn't go over 70 psi because the rims are hookless. They doubt their statement's accurate because the wheel manufacturer in indicates maximum pressure of 100 psi. Who is right? So when the wheel manufacturer is saying 100 psi, that will be on a conventional rim that isn't hookless. Yeah. Your bike shop is right when they say that because hookless rims are usually rated to 73 psi maximum with at least a 25 millimeter tire in, in most instances, but 28 is usually better on hookless yeah. rims. Now in practice, that should be absolutely fine. Like in most scenarios, you know, you're gonna be that's going to result in lower rolling resistance because of the road surface isn't perfect and also you'll get great grip. Um, it's the ETRTO that dictate their maximum pressure. So it's the European Technical um, Organization for RIMS, I can't remember the acronym it stands for, but they've tested loads and that is the pressure you need to stick to irrespective of anyone else's opinion because if it's hookless, take note on that. Yeah. Uh, Dan Herbies is next, or Dan Herbies, <laughs> yeah. who says, Hi, uh, I would like to switch from a 5236 mid-compact chain set yeah. to a 5034 chain set. Do I need to adjust the position of the front derailleur? Yes, Dan, yes, you do. You're gonna need to lower it ever so slightly. So if you move into a smaller size chain ring, you need to drop that mech down and you wanna aim for between one to two millimeters of clearance between the top of the teeth and where the bottom section of the front derailleur curves around. Mm. So make sure there's clearance. What you'll find is that by switching those smaller chain rings, if you don't move your front derailleur, it probably still will work a bit because you know Shimano group sets are, are, are so good, but it's not gonna be set up optimally, which means your shifting will be compromised and you're also probably likely to drop your chain while shifting yeah. as well, uh, which you definitely don't wanna do. Next question is from Matthew Cycling. They say, hi Alex, a couple of questions about carbon seat posts. I've got Scott Addict with a carbon frame and the original aluminum seat post, considering upgrading to a carbon one. Do carbon seat posts significantly improve comfort and can you clamp a carbon seat post in a service stand as they're always told not to? Uh, right, so yes, you can clamp a carbon post in, in a stand and that's yeah. where you should clamp your bike because that is an object which is designed to be clamped at the seat post collar. So it's designed to take force in that direction. Your seat tube, or not your seat tube, sorry, your top tube isn't designed no, to be clamped. don't clamp clamped. that, please don't. clamp your top tube, you can crack it. Um, now in terms of upgrading your post, the other part of your question, Upgrading your post, it's gonna save a bit of weight on your bike, yeah. and it is gonna help dampen vibration ever yeah. so slightly, but this is really minimal, and it's not gonna be a huge amount. To put it into context, going to bigger tires and running them at a slightly lower pressure is gonna make much more difference in terms of comfort than changing your yeah. seat post. By far, I completely agree. Yeah, it's not gonna be a game changer to change your seat post. Yeah. Next question in is from Jan Kroken, who says, hi, I've got a Canyon Air Road with Altegra 8000 Di2, and I find myself riding in the 5311 90% of the time and still sometimes spinning out. Or what should I do? Spinning out at 5311 This all guy's the time. incredible. Yeah. Actually, wow. it was a really good comment there underneath this. That was a good this. reply, yeah. So, someone says, Jake Underhill says, get a pro contract. <laughs> Of course, it's spinning out 5311 all the time. Um, well, if the pro contract doesn't work out, I am a little bit baffled. Yes, uh, I am. That you're constantly, I mean, where do you, do you like live at the top of a massive a mountain? Descent. Yeah. And then just get a ski lift back home every day. So I've actually got some estimations here on the speed that you can ride at at set RPMs for right. that gear. So if you use a 5311, and you have a cadence of around 90 RPM, which yeah. I think is pretty acceptable, isn't it, for yeah. most people to ride at, you'd have a um, maximum speed of 54.95 kilometers an hour. So that means this person said he rides above 55k an hour 90% of the time. Well, I, I don't know if you watched Liège Baston Liège at the weekend on GCN Plus. Oh, I did, Remco yeah. Evenepoel's solo attack at the end, incredible. Yeah. He averaged about 50k an hour. So yeah. even Remco Evenepoel was not. <laughs> 
was not spinning out of 53.11 yeah. the entire time. I think maybe we need to assess a bit more information here on yeah. what this person is calling spinning out. Maybe they're just someone with an incredibly low cadence. Mm. I think if that's the case, they're probably best working on improving that cadence first rather than just changing to bigger gearing on yeah, the Yeah, so going 74k an hour is about 120 RPM. Yeah. Uh, with 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 that. So conceivably, if you're going down a fast descent near where you live, you might be spinning out. Like, you know, that yeah. 120 RPM isn't something you really want to sustain for large amounts of time. And well, there are descents I've done. Could they? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you are like really tanking it down straight descents, you can switch to a bigger chain ring, uh, something like a 55 or a 56 tooth ring. Yeah. Go with that. Yeah, okay. Right, next question is from Ali Shafai who says, why can't anyone truly solve bicycle flats being as rare as getting one in an automobile? Now they know that automobile wheels and tires are very different than a bike wheel and they can wear out just the same. But they either say they can wear out a set of car tires without getting a flat, whereas on the bike, they get flat every now and again. I know there's things like foam inserts and sealants, but why is there no reasonable solution similar to what the car industry has figured out? Thanks, guys and gals. Yeah, I think the biggest reason for this is simply down to uh, weight and rolling resistance. And because cars have so much more power being delivered to the yeah. wheels, they can have much more heavy duty tires. And the thickness of rubber that, that is there and the actual so much more. puncture protection and stuff is so much more significant. Whereas if you were to employ that same level of protection on a bike tire, I mean, it would be horrible to ride. It would be incredibly slow. It'd be heavy and slow. But that said, if you do want an almost guaranteed way of not having any punctures on your bike, you're gonna have to just run solid tires. Now there are one or two options out there when it comes to that, but like we are saying, they are quite a lot heavier and quite a lot slower. Yeah, they feel like riding through custard yeah. <laughs> when I've tried them, so yeah. There's a middle ground out there though. There's lots of winter tires, slightly more heavy duty options, which offer that kind of balance between trade-off and speed and puncture protection. And so yeah. explore some and of those. And you could go all out and put inserts in and sealant and do everything you can. Full in. works. Yeah. Mm. Okay, what we've got next? Uh, Dylan Ang uh, says, struggling to find disc brake pads that last. I've been using organic ones from SRAM and they annoyingly last me only about five months. Any recommendations for something that will last longer? Yeah, simply switch to a metallic compound. The organic or resin pads are a much softer compound and therefore they're gonna wear out considerably quicker. Downside of switching to a metallic based compound is that it's gonna increase a little bit of the noise you get from your brake, but it will by far be worth it for making your brakes last longer. Simple cool. answer that. Yeah, uh, Anestas says, I upgraded my Fulcrum Disc Brake 700 wheels with tubeless GP5000 32mm tires. For some reason, it's losing pressure. Over one or two weeks, it can go from 70 PSI to 40 PSI. I pretty much need to check my tire pressure every other day if I want it to be precise. Is this normal? I've tried replacing valve cores and adding even more sealant, but no help. Um, I've also used Continental valves and all sorts to look for bubbles and these look, yeah. Sounds like they've tried a lot of stuff, yeah. but that pressure loss over that period of time, in my mind, is, is pretty acceptable because tyres are porous. So over time, yeah. the air will gradually seep out of them. This will be more apparent in a sort of high performance tyre because you've got a thinner sidewall. And it's even the same on latex inner tubes. They can lose pressure overnight. Mm. I've found though with certain wheel tire combinations when I've set them up tubeless that they tend to, some hold air inexplicably way better than yep. others. Some experience what, what, what you're describing uh, here, Anestas, but it, I, I have had ones where they do tend to hold the air much better, but unfortunately, and it's frustrating for me to say, it is very sort of hit and miss and there doesn't seem to be any rule or rhyme um, to govern it, really. Yeah, I completely agree. Best best thing to do is just to check your tyre pressure every time you go for a ride. Obviously, if you're riding every single day, you don't check your tyres every day, but if you want to have the correct tyre pressure exactly how you want it, that's the only way to do it. And the positive of this as well, at every cloud, is that you're running GP5000s, which are a performance tyre, yeah. that are a very fast rolling resistance tyre. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not all bad. Yeah. Right, on to our final question for this week. It's from Saeed Tar. Unfortunately, I can't say a second name. Al Junied. 
Oh, perfect. They say, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, is, oh yeah. is it advisable to increase my front chainring size to a 54 or 55 to have the most effective chain line for maximum efficiency? Well, this is going to depend about the speeds that you ride at first, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, hmm. I mean, for maximum efficiency, like, you know, if you were aiming to ride at sort of 30 miles an hour or, or 50 kilometers per hour, then you'd probably want to go bigger than that. Yeah. You know, you'd probably want to go up to, uh, you know, approaching a sort 58? of a 58 or, yeah. or, or 60 tooth chain ring so that then you could be in the, the 19 um, in the middle of the block. But that said, you know, it is very marginal gains this. You're, you're very much like, it's only fractions of a watt and a, and, and a, and a watt at either end of the Someone that's so. maybe obsessed over every little detail or racing or a time trial, this might find it a very small area to gain an advantage. But for the majority of people, it's not going to make much difference, is it? No. And factor in that, you know, it, it's, it depends on how much time you're wanting to spend at that specific gear. So relatively speaking, if you're then going to go on a hilly ride, you might have actually made your drivetrain less efficient because you've, you know... You've got extreme chain lines then. Yeah. So the idea behind it is to try and make the chain in the straightest line possible because that helps to reduce some of that friction. Yes. Mm. So if you're doing a time trial, as Alex says, and you're aiming to spend 90% of that ride in that one gear with that optimised chain line, then yes, it makes sense. But for all round use, maybe not. Mm. Well, that was it. That was our last question for this week's Tech Clinic. Thanks for submitting your questions. As always, sorry if we haven't got to answer it, but keep submitting it in the comments section down below. Fingers crossed, we'll get to it in the coming weeks. Right, see, see you later. later.